Hello and welcome to Into the 99, where we have 99 cards because Command is number one. I'm your host, S. Lotus, for another episode of Bring It Live. Uh, today, Han couldn't make it, so I have the next best thing. I have one of the other hosts of Into the 99, Dan. Say hi, Dan. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, yeah, as you know, if you've seen the show before, we're going to do some deck brewing. So Lotus, explain the format here. So, uh, with the help of you guys in chat, we will brew Omnath Locus of Rage from scratch. I'm sure you have some ideas, Dan, and I'm going to uh, try and confuse you. <laughs> I'm uh, very interested to see how you would have gone and built this one. So, we'll get down to what Omnath Locus of Rage is. So, it's uh, a red a green, a white, and a blue for a legendary elemental 4-4. When Omnath enters the battlefield, draw a card. Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, gain 4 life. Uh, if it's the second, add red, green, white, blue. And if it's the third time, deal 4 damage to each opponent and each planeswalker you do not control. It's a very powerful card. Omnath has such a cool ability. As you are the first time being on the show, I've already put 36 lands in the deck because that's an average that we do. We can go up, we can go down. 36 is crazy. I know you don't like it that much, but deal with it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's an interesting amount of lands. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you start it off. I kind of, like I said, when we first started talking, I, I wanted to see exactly how you decided you want to do this because I'm very interested. That's fair. So let's start things off. If you have an Omnath deck, you want to put more Omnaths in. So let's go put Locust of Rage in. It's a three red, red, green, green elemental 5-5 five, five with landfall. Uh, when a land enters the battlefield, put a 5-5 five, five red and green elemental creature token into play. Uh, and when it or another elemental dies, it deals three damage to target creature or player. Yeah, Omnath definitely functions really well with Omnath. And then what goes better is another Omnath, Locust of the Royal in. I was going to say, did you choose Omnath in a river? Uh, angry wet jelly bean, yes. So uh, <laughs> one green, blue, red for a 3-3 three, three elemental. When it enters the battlefield, it deals damage to any target equal to the number of elementals you control. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on target elemental you control. If you control eight or more lands, draw a card. I like Omnath just in general. All of the Omnaths. I'm still waiting for five color omnipotent Planeswalker Omnath. I think that'll be a good time. As soon as he gets the black man, Planeswalker for sure. Yep, that's his spark. Ashen, if you have some Akamagawa stuff... Oh, you already did. Azusa Lost But Seeking is one that Ashen wants to put in. Yeah, those extra lands definitely are very, very good. Have you thought how I'm building this deck yet? Nope, not at all. It looks like you're going landfall creature-based. Ah, oh, landfall, you say. <laughs> oh, how wrong you are. I'm going elemental tribal. Elemental tribal. I went a totally different way with what I wanted to, and basically, as soon as we started talking about it, I went all for lands. Everything that I... I've lands matter deck. I love lands. I made a real list. And the first card on mine is uh, one that you don't see. I looked in all the EDH rec lists. So I didn't see it at all. Uh, it's Maze's End. Maze's End? Maze's End. Okay. I'll quickly explain my reasoning for Maze's End. Omnoth's ability triggers on that second landfall to give you four mana. It is such a good ability. Maze's End has the ability to tutor your library four lands and puts one back into your hand. So you're always holding one to be able to get out. Now I understand, and that makes perfect sense. So already on its face, it's very good. It's a really, really good color-fixing card if you need to be able to get other things out. Uh, it can go fetch your guild gates, which is important. But it's also a really, really sneaky win condition in it because there is so many ways to, like I said, I went all... I went entirely into just like lands and fetching lands and a lands matter and a lands really matter deck. And so, yeah, like I said, I went the guild gates for really, really cheap color fixing. Okay. And I went mazes end just so I can always trigger that landfall ability to get that format. Totally agree. That's actually something really good. Ashen has also said if we're doing elemental tribal, then Baduka Gardener is perfect. So it is one of the old flip cards on the 
first side it is a one and green tap you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield if you control 10 or more lands flip it and then on the flip side it's four green green and tap create an xx green elemental creature token where x is the number of lands you control i like it that's doing pretty good my next card i was going to suggest was risen reef yeah, Risen Reef's very good. Mainly because I knew you were going to do Landfall and I was going to go completely the opposite direction because that's what we do here. <laughs> you, you give me a Landfall-based commander, I'm immediately going into the Landfall side of it. That's why I looked at the other side of it. So Risen <laughs> Reef is a one green-blue elemental 1-1. One, one. Whenever it or another elemental enters the battlefield under control, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land... Put it into the battlefield tapped. If you don't put the card onto the battlefield, put it into your hand. That's a good one. It doesn't even matter if it's a token or not, which is amazing. I also put my favorite land harmonicon in because, like I said, I went, like I went landfall travel. So I'm pretty sure that Green Warden, uh, Ancient Green Warden, I think it's an elemental, so it might fit your theme. But doubling up that trigger of the eight mana, ooh. Yeah, four green green for an elemental five seven with reach. Play lands from the graveyard. If a land entering the battlefield causes a trigger ability of a permanent you control to trigger, uh, that ability triggers an additional time. You're wanting, Honestly, you the... want ETBs? Oh, I, I, it's me. There's Field of Deads on the list for sure. Okay. There, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's, you can just knock that one right out of the park. Field of the Dead's definitely going to be there. Okay, let's put Field of the Dead in. Because why not? Yeah, I mean, if we're having four different colors in our commander, it's just going to happen, isn't it? don't even have to try yeah. field of the dead is such a good card just in general it I, I run it in everything that can make use of it because i just can't not get enough of how good that card is they never should have printed a card that powerful so silly and like i said with maze's end yeah you want to dump lots of lands in but anyone who sits across from this is going to see an azusa they're going to try and get rid of it you really want to be able to trigger that two lands every turn for that four mana that four mana it's a lot. It's a lot of mana. It color fixes for you. So Field of the Dead triggers going off twice a turn as well. Love it. Yep. No, I totally agree. We also want our elementals to trigger things like Risen Reef. But what if we mm -hmm. could make them trigger Landfall at the same time and have a Shire Soul of a the Shire? Wild? Yep. Yeah. So yep. Shire is a good one. <laughs> Shire is amazing. Just hope we don't get Blood Mooned. <laughs> <laughs> blood moon is a great interaction with it we'll we'll one day go over the that we have a bit of history of over this don't worry about it <laughs> so three oh, uh, titania is really really good from the chat there ashen oh tight priest of titania no no titania um i think it's like priestess of agroth or something uh, I, I can't remember what exactly it is i it's the actual legend of titania oh titania protector of argoth three green green yeah, elemental uh five three when it enters the battlefield return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield whenever a land you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield create a five three elemental that's some good value that's right there all about what you like right that's suiting my play style and your play style Mm -hmm. uh, I also, in in my list of cards, I put Amulet of Vigor. I assume we're fetching a lot of lands. We want to trigger that ability, like I said. So any of your Cultivate, far seek, any of those things that are going to put your lands into play tapped, you want them untapped as much as you can. Yeah. Also, if you're doing like bounce lands and things, so we can have the like Karoo a... Land. a yeah, like a Gruul Turf, you can put that in, untap it, bounce another one. If we're playing multiple a turn, put that one in. If you're going elementals, uh, royal elemental, I believe. Is that the blue one? Yes, this is the one we spoke of on last week's Bring It Live. Um, this one is three blue, blue, blue for f elemental with flying. Three, two. Uh, when a land enters the battlefield under your control, gain control of target creature for as long as you control royal elemental. <laughs> uh, Geode Ravager. I can't remember which one is that. Is that landfall one damage to each opponent? Geode. Oh, it is Geode Rager. Rager. Four red red elemental. First strike, four three. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, goad each creature target player controls. Oh, that's the one from uh, the Obun deck. Yes. I also put in Obun. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, so 
I like things that you can do with that Omnoth mana, and Obun is a great target for it, because the path that I'm going to go down with a bunch of my remaining cards is, you'll see why Obun's in the deck, just the ability to get weird costed cards into play. I really like that with Omnoth's ability. I mean, yeah, you can get all four colors from that ability, so it makes casting so much easier. Yeah, I um, with the amount of ramping you'll probably be doing in a deck like this, triggering four land a turn or four mana, playing ramp spells, playing big elementals, you're kind of going to run out of cards pretty easily. Yeah. So, oh, of course, Lotus Cobra. We'll we'll get to that one. Don't you worry. Uh, no, it's a Lotus. I'm. I don't care. It's got to be in there. It's pff, anything. We'll get in there. Anything Lotus arranged. Drop everything, put it in. <laughs> <laughs> Lotus Cobra is such a good ability to landfall of one mana of any color. Also, like I said, I really like the weird costed abilities that you can do with this stuff. And you really do need to color fix with it a bit. There's yep. there's going to be some cheaper ramp things we'll go into in a bit, like I said, on my side. But uh, what I was saying is that uh, you need to be able to draw. You're, you're going to run out of a hand really, really quickly. I, I play... Ramp and Landfall is like my favorite mechanic. I, I talk about it all the time. Field of the Dead is like my favorite card to play. But you very often just run out of things to play. If you are if you have 10 mana out on turn 4 or 5, you usually don't have things in your hand, right? Unless yeah. you're playing like a Dragon Travel deck. So I would put in something like a Horn of Greed. Ooh. A horn of, like a Horn of Greed, a Rite of Flourishing to trigger that extra lands to get me the extra draws. Because we're going to need to draw on a deck like this. Yeah, so you every time a player plays a land, you put a you draw a card. Mm -hmm. That seems fair. See, my kind of draw package that I was thinking of was a guardian project. Well, especially if you're triggering so many creatures. Now, this is where my judge brain kicks in. So, a shire oh. makes all creatures forest lands in addition to their other types. So. When Ancient Geen Warden says if a land entering the battlefield causes a triggerability of a permanent, Guardian Project would trigger twice. Garrick's Uprising is uh, another one that is a solid one. Uh, that or... So we'll put Garrick's I... Uprising in. The other one that I know, because uh, Garrick's Uprising... Elemental Bond, thank you. Uh, yes, because uh, Garrick's Uprising is four or greater, where Elemental Bond is three or greater. However, Garrick's Uprising gives us Trample. But I think, as you say, I think we're going to need all of it. Well, yeah, because you're, like I said, you're going to run out of of cards pretty quickly because we're going to be ramping really, really hard. The other one that I would always run in a green deck um, is the Great Henge. That's a great card. I'm, I just have never been super excited about it. It seems like it does so much, and maybe that's why I just don't ever play it too much because it, it's solid on every front. It's ramp, it's life gain, it's mana. Well, it I it's also seven, draw, yeah. Yeah, it's seven green green, but it costs X less f for the greatest among creatures power you control. Uh, it adds double green and gains two life. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you put a plus one counter on it and draw a card. I'm not sure why this isn't in my Merfolk deck, actually. Yeah, Great Henge is, like I said, it's just a card that does so much, and maybe that, like maybe that's why its price has stayed so consistently high yeah it's expensive yeah but it has so much stuff built into it i'm looking at your list of lands it's just so offensive you got 36 it's all oh, basics i said what, we go up and over? down <laughs> <laughs> that's fair that's fair um like i said i went into a lands matter deck so we're going to go into the ways to get those lands tempt with discovery it's like my favorite Ooh. thing to try and convince the whole table to go get it at its worst, it's going to get us one of the lands that we actually care about, which to me would be Field of the Dead or Maze's End, because I can trigger so many things with those cards. And at best, it gets so many things. And I love Tempt most of people are tempted, to be fair. You're playing Horn of Greed. I don't know if we put in Rites of Flourishing, stuff like that. Like, we're this is a group hug deck. It just happens to make a lot of elemental tokens to overrun can the put table. Rites of Flourishing in if you want. Oh, extra land, draw, it's everything we want. Are we making enough mana? That's the question. There's a really well, you have to remember that that with Omnoth, every time you get your second land, so every, like I said, cultivate, ex explosive vegetation, any of those spells, you're going to, a lot of the time, they pay for themselves, right? Uh, Tempt with Discovery, if you have the four mana to cast it, can cast your next ramp spell. Or 
vice versa. If you've just played two lands, you free tempt with discovery. I was more thinking so even of you... another elemental. Go on. How about a Nyx Bloom Ancient? Oh, Nyx Bloom Ancient's always good. Yeah. But here's here's we're already running into the problem. You don't run X spells. Well, maybe this is where you come in, or maybe where yeah, chat, we've got... or where chat comes in. We've got. <laughs> yeah, we definitely have to run the. The X spells in a deck like this, you're going to have so much mana available. There's going to be a lot, especially with Omnath's ability, with us recycling lands from the grave with um, Land Harmonicon. Angle I would 100% for sure put in Genesis Wave. Obsidian Fineheart as a mana sink. Yeah, it. Uh, I think it's one triple red and it lets you put... Uh, like counters that deal damage at the beginning of upkeep triggers. It, it is good, but you'd be you'd be hard pressed to actually get its ability off as much as you'd like. One double red, sorry. One double put a blaze red, counter on it. Put a blaze counter on target land without a blaze counter on it. For as long as that land has a blaze counter on it, it has at the beginning of your upkeep this land deals one damage to you. So you put it on your opponent's lands. Yep. Let's pop that in for now. Um what was the X spell that you said, Dan? Genesis Wave. Genesis Wave. X, a green, green, green. Sorcery. Reveal the, the top X cards of your library. You may put any number of permanent cards with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Then put all cards revealed this way that weren't put onto the battlefield into your graveyard. I'd also run Nalia's Intervention. Uh, on the off chance we're playing against like an Angel Tribal deck, it gives us that ability to wipe the flyers. But again, it lets us go get specifically land cards, not basic land cards, any land card. And we need to go get land cards. Uh, oh, yes, yes. This is the only X spell in my uh, Merfolk deck. Yes. God, you need so many more of them. Yes, I'm going to redo the Merfolk deck. Don't you worry. Uh, Let's so... make a second Merfolk deck that's all X spells. <laughs> not all X spells, just a few more. Uh, Knight of Barwa, much like there's always room for Jello, I think there's always room for Triumph of the Hordes because Infect. Seriously, Infect. <laughs> In Infect is good, but is it good enough? I mean, what I'm tempted to do, just for the sake of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in a maybe board. It won't count to our 100, but it's there if we need it. You're making Token Swarm, it's true. Uh, I would also, like I said, I, I love things to actually do with the mana. I'd run Luminarch Ascension. We're very, very light on our white cards right now. I love Luminarch Ascension. This is actually a deck, by the way, that uh, I wouldn't necessarily even run Soul Ring in because, like, you're not, yeah, you're looking for good ramp and stuff, but it's not getting the same benefit it gets when you can get a commander out early. Look, you need things more to get Omnoth's colors off, and yeah. it's such a weird a weird segment of colors that I, I just personally, it, it's okay, but I, I'd run more of the pips. Yeah, so uh, Ashen doesn't like Soul Ring in any deck, but this is... Reach it, Ashen. <laughs> this is specifically a, I wouldn't even say a Mana Rock deck. I would prefer to run all of the um, search spells. So, I, like nature. I would lore. run the search spells. Yeah, and I, I think like... Uh, I think when you're running something like this, uh, like you said, exactly, the the low mana ramp is really, really solid. And I also think things like uh, Noble Hierarch, Birds of Paradise, I think that those are really, really going to shine in, in something like this. And oh, Lantac. the Secret Lair, Birds of Paradise is so good. I do love that Secret Lair. And Noble Hierarch's just been reprinted as well, hasn't it? Yeah. Double Masters. I think it's uh, still a fairly pricey-ish card, but again, the... Triple color fix at one mana and exalted. It's yeah. not an elemental. I get it. Well, do you remember when we were talking about Merfolk? Mm -hmm. And there was a Merfolk that got Merfolk to the top of the deck. Yep. There's one for elementals. Okay. Flame King Harbringer. One white for a 1 1 elemental shaman. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an elemental card, reveal it, shuffle your library, and put it on top. I like it. It's just a nice little simple one. There's also, um, if you're going still on the Birds of Paradise thing, just want to put in uh, Smoke Braider. Smoke Braider, that's Sm one I don't know. Yeah, Smoke Braider, one and a red for a 1-1 one, one Elemental Shaman. Tap, add two mana in any combination of colors 
to your mana pool. Spend this mana only to cast elemental spells or activate abilities of elementals. Two mana of any color, that's phenomenal to get Omnoth out. Yep, it's a two mana mana. I door. definitely like that one. <laughs> yeah. Deadeye Navigator and Dockside Extortionist. Ah, that only works in competitive when everyone has three so three mana crypts. <laughs> I mean, that is a definite good combination. <laughs> it, it Actually, though, if you have a Shia, it's a pretty good combination because you get your infinite land uh, bounce. Oh, maybe that is a good choice, actually. I'd maybe board it and see. Wow, we've racked up some cards already. We're at 69 cards. Wow. There's, a, there's definitely a ton that we'll be able to. Uh, I really, really like Once Upon a Time. It's like one of my favorite opening hand cards right now. I've never really thought about using this in Commander. I use it so much. It's such a solid card. The ability to dig for, I believe it's creatures and lands. Is it not? I always use it for lands. So one and a green for an instant. If this spell is the first spell you've cast this game, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. Uh, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or land card from among them and put this into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom in a random order. I just love it. it. It gives us the chance to maybe get one of the colors we're missing, or get one of the dorks, or something important to us, and it's a free spell. Who doesn't like free spells? No, I know. And talking of free spells, if we're running so many elementals, what about Reflections of Litjara? Yep. Yeah, thanks the Han Shop for subscribing, even though you're my regular host. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Reflections of Litjara uh, 4 and a blue enchantment as it enters the battlefield choose a creature type whenever you cast a spell of the chosen type copy that spell so that will copy all of our elemental creatures we're, we're light on our ramp we're way lighter on ramp than I want to be so I would throw in some of our cultivates ooh nature's will is a great card <laughs> and winter orb what kind of a monster would you would build this <laughs> i i i'm I, that one <laughs> nature's will this whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player untap all lands that player controls and untap all lands you control yeah so give them the tap down untap all yours that's pretty solid you should be able to actually get through with nature's will i like that yeah that's that's pretty good I'm not so sure on Winters or personally. <laughs> the Chaos Bloom. Averna the Chaos Bloom. The uh, the Cascade one. I don't know. I, I don't think I would so much go into it. Am I, the, am I thinking the right one? The Chaos Bloom? 4-2. As you Cascade, you may put a land card from among the exiled cards onto the battlefield tapped, and it is an elemental. And we don't have any other Cascading things. I, I'd run, honestly, like a Exploration. It's another great turn one drop in a deck like this. Yeah, exploration. You say that we're running low on white. Path to exile. Mm -hmm. So it's great creature removal for someone that has a creature that we want removed. Or if we want a, an emergency land drop, we can exile one of our tokens. I like that. White has solid removal. Yeah. We're really light on removal itself, actually. Maybe a return to dust. Turn to dust. So that one is two white, white, exile target artifact or enchantments. If you cast this during your main phase, you may X up to one other artifact or enchantment. I agree, that should go in. However, my favorite removal in that way is Barrier Breach. Okay. Two and a green. Exile up to three target enchantments. And it has cycling two. Barrier Breach is solid. Let's run that one because you don't see that one very often. And I think we're going to be a lot heavier on our green uh, as our general mana base. Like, I think just looking at it, I don't think we're going to be running too much of the other colors so far. We're, we're very heavily skewed green. Uh, yes, we are. <laughs> we have hardly any white. And we have over, I'd say, 60% green. Yeah, so we're, we're going to want that. I am... Um, Let's let's get it out of the way. I want to put every one of the guild gates that we can put into the deck into the deck. I think I've got them all. I think there should be seven in this color. One, Am I crazy? I think there's... Oh, um, it's the colorless one, one of them. Um, Gateway Plaza. That's it. I'll, I'll put it to 35 lands. You feeling a bit happier? Oh, no, we're going way lower than that. Don't worry about that. Uh, Guildless Commons, another great, the Karoo land. And we're going guild gates. I say, I say include the Guildless Commons. 
Yeah, okay, Guildless Commons. It's a shame it's not an actual gate, but yeah. I wish it was. We need a Vestuva and a Thespian stage. I wonder. You'll understand how... soon. No, I was wondering how you were going to get your 10 things. Vesuva and Thespian stage. Uh, I, I noticed that Hans also mentioned Nissa who shakes the world. Did you want that in there? Um, we don't have enough forests, I don't think. Like, a shy is good, but a shy is not our commander, so... Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Ooh, scapeshift is good. Oh, that... um, I would actually over scapeshift, though. I'd go reshape the earth. Reshape Where, the, the earth? Ability, it's a huge spell, but it gets us 10 lands at 9 mana, and I think that's mana we can hit. Reshape the earth. 6 green, 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 sorcery. Search your library for up to 10 land cards. Put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Well, there's all 10 gates. Yeah, so we can't quite hit 10 of the gates. We still need to be able to get them. So we have Obun who can animate lands. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of mana available to us. And we have a lot of cool creatures. Right of Replication. Right of Replication. Two blue blue sorcery with kicker five. Put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of target creature. If Right of Replication was kicked, put five of those tokens onto the battlefield instead. Animate one of the lands. Make five of them. Yes. The point I like to do in every deck that I can is see how many Field of Deads I can make. Okay. Okay. So it is very fun <laughs> to make so many of them. Um, we have a lot of really, really solid cards as well. Uh, Mirage Mirror is another one that I would also want to play. Uh, its ability to copy any of our important creatures, uh, copy things like your Guardian Project or our lands, Mirage Mirror basically can't be beat in a deck like this when it has so many permanent base targets. Yeah. Nope, that that I understand. Mirage Mirror is a great card. Oh, Progenitor Mimic is also a really, really cool card. Uh, is it an element? No, it's a shapeshifter. I was going to say it's an elemental. Uh, you may have it enter the battlefield as a copy Although, of any creature on the battlefield, except it has at the beginning of your upkeep. If this creature isn't a token, create a token that's a copy of this creature. It is very fun to Progenitor Mimic a land, because then the Progenitor Mimic becomes a land that constantly makes itself a land. That's amazing. For fun, Thrix the Sudden Storm. I actually had that on my list. Thrix? Yeah, Thrix the Sudden Storm. The good storm. old uncounterable. Three blue blue for an elemental giant, four five flash flying. Spells you cast with converted mana cost five or greater, cost one generic less to cast, and can't be countered. That's an interesting one. That's pretty sweet. I'd sideboard Obsidian Fireheart. I think it's going to be pretty hard to cast something like that. And when we have those double and triple costs, we already have better targets for it, like the Locus of Rage. Yeah, that's fair. It looks like we're not being very combat-centric, but if we do, there are some lords that we can shove in if you want to go that route. Well, you 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 did say you want to go down the elemental, and so far we're very, very land-based. So what else can we do with the elementals? So you have Creeping Trailblazer. It's okay. uh, one red, one green. Uh, for an elemental 2-2. Two, two. Other elementals you control get plus 1, plus 0, oh, and pay 2 red, green. Creeping Trailblazer gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn for each elemental you control. That is a great suggestion. That is actually a really cool card. And then the second lord that I was going to suggest is Incandescent Soul Stoke. Uh, this is a 2 and a red for an elemental shaman, 2-2. Two, two. Other elemental creatures you control get plus one, plus one. And one in a red and tap, you may put an elemental creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. That creature gains haste until end of turn. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Not, that's not too, too bad. I don't think we're running... It's a great lord, but are we running enough elementals to get them out? I mean, everything I've suggested like is an ability. elemental. <laughs> How many do we have so far? Okay, we have 14 elementals. 15 with the commander. Yes. So we're we're not we're not too bad. Um in the chat there, I don't know if you saw it, but uh uh Dionychus, I, I can't even pronounce it. John, thank you John. Uh said dry to the list in Grove and I think that that's a really really good suggestion. The color fix, the extra land can't beat a card like that uh two and a green you may pay an additional land on each of your turns land you control are every basic land type in addition to their other types for the love of god valakut molten pinnacle okay landfall bolt brian 
it's in just for that. It's worth it. It's so worth it. I I I just want to see Brian's face now. And Valica Exploration. I have to remind That's myself what card. that does. It's one of the new landfall ones. It's really, really good. It uh, it exiles cards from the top of your library on landfall, mm -hmm. but also lets you still play the land so you don't actually wreck yourself. And at the beginning of your end step, if there are cards exiled with Valica Exploration, put them in their owner's graveyard. Then Valica Exploration deals that much damage to each opponent. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's a pretty solid one for sure. Yeah, that that's a good one. Are we drawing enough cards? I think we should have more draw. I'd honestly run something that... Is there any uh, mana sync draw? Like maybe like a Kefnet. Kefnet's not an elemental, but... Just the ability to... you got to have something to do with your land. Uh, Kefnet the Mindful? Yeah. Pay four, draw a card, then you may return a land you control to its owner's hand. Oh, that does two things we want. Yeah. I think Kefnet's a solid uh, sink. He's also a pretty, like, a pretty solid blocker as well. Yeah, with Indestructible, Flying, and we can just keep bouncing our lands to draw cards and re-trigger our Landfall. Yeah. I'm More just... draw, hey? All of my draws all group hug. It's all font of mythos and and uh <laughs> howling mine. I put howling mine in every deck. Just play reshape the earth once Valica exploration is out. Yeah. I've just noticed how bad that can get and I'm I'm loving how that's looking. It's looking... Oh, uh Sylvan uh Sylvan Exploration as well. Sil Sylvan Scrying. Again, the ability to fetch any land. So important. Yes. And the um, and rotation. the uh, throwback frame is beautiful on these cards. True. Uh, crop rotation. We also, we, yeah, you got to Like I said, there's so many good lands. I personally, like I said, my first target based on the lands we have right now, I would get something like uh, Maze's End because we're going to be able to constantly trigger that ability and have it pay for itself with Omnoth's ability. Yeah, that seems rare. Um, well of lost I love dreams. That's a good one. Is that uh, lets you whenever you gain life, you can pay that much? Is that right? Well of lost dreams for whenever you gain life, you may pay X where X is less than or equal to the amount that you've gained. If you do, draw X cards. So basically, we gain extremely good in this. Yeah, gain four life off Omnath. Pay four, draw four. Yeah, that's. Very, very good, actually. Yeah, that's pretty damn good. Yeah, at its worst case, even if we want to pay one, draw one, solid. But on our first land, that's very, very good. That's a good suggestion. Yeah. Living Twister is uh, lets you bounce lands. Is that correct? Living Twister. I believe it's also an elemental. Uh, red, red, green, elemental. One and a red. Discard a land card. Living Twister deals two damage to any target. Pay a green. Return a tapped land you control to its owner's hand. Yeah, I, I think that's great protection. Yeah. Um, I have another card that you might have not heard of. Bright Hearth Banneret. Love it. You know this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, one I know the Bannerets. Yep, one and a red for a 1-1 one, one Elemental Warrior. Elemental and warrior spells cost one generic less to play and reinforce one. One and a red. Uh, discard this card, put a plus one counter on target creature. I mean, you're not going to do that, but if your elementals cost one generic less, that's pretty good. Now, um, are we going to put an Avenger we... of Zendikar in here? Oh, of course. It's an How elemental. Can we forget it? <laughs> I'm surprised no one's mentioned it sooner. Just a good card. When it enters the battlefield, create zero one plant creature tokens for each land. Landfall, whenever land enters the battlefield, put a plus one counter on each plant you control. See, I did keep landfall in mind, but I definitely went elemental tribal. <laughs> landfall is just the greatest. God Eternal Oketra. Ooh, I do love God Eternal Oketra. It's a great mana sink. Or no, God Eternal Oketra is uh, whenever you cast a creature, you get your 4-4 four, four zombies, is that right? Yeah, with Vigilance. Yeah. I mean, we are yeah. casting a lot of creatures in this deck. Mm. 
There's another one that I wanted to uh, mention. It's the Keanu Sentiro. It's that's a really really popular commander type in these colors, and it does the same thing that we want. It cares about lands. It gives us some draw, and it lets us cast that weird color fixing what with uh, Omnath. Uh, no, Kianos no. and Tiro of Melodus. At the beginning of your end step, draw a card. Each player may put a land card from their hand onto the battlefield. Then each opponent who didn't draws a card. Nice. And you draw as well with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ancient Green Warden Land Harmonicon is is right there. <laughs> it's <laughs> one of the first ones we oh. did. Uh, another one. Uh, Tireless Tracker is... We're pretty light on... Uh, we're not that light on our creatures, actually, but I'd still run Tireless Tracker just so we have that mana sync draw with the clues. Uh, two and a green. Human Scout, 3-2. Whenever land enters the battlefield under control, investigate. Uh, so you can pay two and sacrifice the artifact to draw a card, and whenever you sacrifice a clue, put a plus one counter on it. Yeah, more card draw. What about a Lithioform yeah. Engine? Oh, Lithoform Engine would be really, really good. Uh, copy permanence, great. Uh, we can't copy our lands with it, very sadly. Boo-hoo. But we can copy spells, permanence, and uh, I believe triggered abilities. Uh, activated or trigger, so we can copy Omnath's abilities. Yeah. Try and play a Super Friends deck against this. I dare you. <laughs> uh, yes, we have crop rotation in there. Uh, we need to cultivate. Yeah. Cultivate explosive vegetation. Let's just get those right out of the way. Cultivate and explosive veggies. Ooh, Kodama's Reach. I also like that one. Ah, yes. Three visits. Uh, we're not running enough... Uh, I think we're not running enough forest. We'd be getting basic forest with three visits. Is it basic? I would put land tax in the deck. Yeah, three, visit, uh, three visits is any forest, but we so far don't have any really dual landy things. No, I mean, we could, but yeah, it might limitate us. But then nature's law oh, gets us a forest. Root. Uh, circuitous route. Ah. Fetches two basics or two gates. Ooh, let's run triumphs. Right, okay, so Ketria we can. Uh, tuner. And Rogrin we can. Yeah, Rogrin is the, yeah. the white one, right? Yeah, we can run them. What's our basic land count sitting at? Basic land is five forests, five islands, five mountains, six plains. Okay, so, yeah, land tax is definitely a go for that one. Really? A great turn one drop. Oh, yeah. You, you got to remember that we're just trying to, because land tax will fetch you any basic lands, and we, we just need to hit those colors for Omnoth. Once the machine is on, we don't care about it, right? Nice. So pulling those basics out of our deck early is, is so vital. That's fair. That's something I wouldn't have actually thought of myself personally. And oh, it's ninety dollars or thirty-one. I don't know. There's something yeah. wrong there. We need some things that are going to get us some lands out. So our, uh, I would say, terramorphic, uh, terramorphic expanse, evolving wilds, kind of things. Those are also cards that are going to double trigger Omnath. Um, I would say that, but I would probably go with Fabled Passage. Oh, fancy. Fable Passage is just the upgraded version. Um, I'm well aware of what Fable Passage is. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say probably Fable Passage over at least one of them and uh, Terramorphic. Fable than a Terramorphic, yeah. Yep, they're pretty good. So we were at 38, so we'll drop two planes because we don't need them. Oh, Uro. Oh, Uro's amazing. And an elemental. Uh, I don't think it is. Elder Giant. I'm pretty sure it is. Elder Giant, yeah, well, One that was wrong. One green blue for an Elder Giant. When it enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless it escaped. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, gain three life, draw a card, then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield and it escapes for double blue, double green. Harrow is a sack land and gets two on the battlefield. Yeah, Harrow's a solid one. Gets us two basics at instant speed as well, which is pretty good if we need other mana. Yeah. I'd put the other, uh, the land fix guy in Timor. What's his Rattleclaw Mystic? What's that? Uh, Rattleclaw Mystic, he is one in a green, and he taps for one of any of the Timor colors. 
Oh, this dude. Yeah, one uh, taps for green, blue, or red, and it's a morph. Uh, when it's turned face up, add green, blue, red. Another card that I like to run in these colors when I'm able to is Fractured Identity. Oh, Zendikar's Royal is a great card. I don't know why we forgot that one. Fractured Identity, Exile Target, Non-Land Permanent. Each player other than its controller creates a token copy of it. Yeah. Uh, what was the other one? So, uh, the other one was uh, Zendikar's Royal. It's a great landfall card. It's an enchantment. Whenever a land enters the battlefield on your control, create a 2-2 two -two elemental. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm liking that. Oh, and it's elemental. It's exactly what we want. Yeah. Uh, the reason Fraction Identity is we have so many things that are global effect that are really good, like uh, a Rites of Flourishing, for example, right? It doesn't hurt us to exile our own and then give the whole table one and play three or four lands a turn. Okay, yeah, that seems for it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, stuff like that. Or if someone else has like a really, really powerful card on deck, it's exile that's built in for us. It's also the ability to, like I said, double up on anything that if, if someone plays anything remotely group huggy, then we're we're solid. Yeah. I'd cut nature's will. Honestly, I, I don't think we're going to use it as much as we want to. Nature's will, yeah. Nature's will over to the to the maybe board. It's pretty good, but I think we're I think we're trying to do more with some of our cards here. Okay. We want we want things that bring cards in. Yeah, see, John. John gets it. Take out eight or so lands. <laughs> build it CEDH. We'll throw a lot of pips and a mana crypt in. Wow. <laughs> my my playstyle is so different to yours. <laughs> I, w I would run right around 33, 34 lands in something like this. I would so, not go. Okay. Tatiova's a great card. Yeah, three blue and green for a Merfolk Druid 3-3. Three, three. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under control, gain a life and draw a card. How often do you play Guided Passage? Guided Passage? It's a card that doesn't see too much play, and I really, really like Guided Passage. Blue, red, green for a sorcery. Reveal the cards, reveal the cards in your library. An opponent chooses from among them a creature card, a land card, a non-creature, non-land card. You put the chosen cards in your hand, then shuffle your library. I need a copy of that weird card. It's a very, very fun. So at its worst, you get land, creature, non-land, the worst cards in your deck. That's Everyone's like, oh, well, they're going to pick the worst things. Well, everything in your deck should be a good enough target for that. Yeah. I mean, I know that if you don't have the money in your binder diving you're gonna have just filler cards but at some point when you make your deck a tuned well, deck every card should be doing something well the other thing too is that uh you can really really politics with this card i i can say hey lotus i know that you're having a problem with uh brian's propaganda go and get me my barrier breach i want my vesuva and i won't attack you for two turns you pick the creature yeah and that's one thing I think we need to do more as commander players is more politics. Yep. So, yeah. AC is really good as well, the draw on landfall. Fires of Invention is great, but... Uh, Fires of Invention is pretty fun. But I, I don't know. Hmm. Because you can only play to the number of lands. You don't have enough expensive stuff is the problem. Whereas AC definitely really, really goes off. Yeah, so you may play an additional land on each of your turns. Whenever a land enters the battlefield, you may draw a card. We are drawing so many cards. Draws the best mechanic. It is. It's why I can't play Uno. Hmm. Now, do we need to sort of refill our library or actually have a win con with no library? <laughs> <laughs> like just the shoving. win con is so many field of the dead triggers okay that's fine as long as we're in agreement <laughs> we do have a lot of tokens so um a good finisher we the infect is a great one they they were right it is a good rollover i think it was uh ashen that said it um, it's right yeah kozla could be fun yeah trying for the hordes maybe should be in oh we can run cather's crusade Oh. Oh, and Scoot Swarm. Why are we not running Scoot Swarm? What are we doing? Hey, right, okay. So, Carthus Crusade, whenever a creature enters the battlefield on your control, put a plus one counter on each creature control. That's fine. However, I want to suggest this one. 
Mm -hmm. Felidar retreat instead. So it's yep, landfall, one less cat tokens or or the plus one counters on landfall. So it's one mana less, and we get the option between tokens or plus one counters, and they gain vigilance until what? end of turn. What's the landfall triggers? On Felidar retreat. <clears throat> Yeah. Whenever a land enters the battlefield, choose create a 2 2 cat beast creature token or put a plus one counter on each creature you control. Those creatures gain vigilance to end of turn. So much better. Absolutely. Fell at our retreat in. Yep. Such a better card. I really like that. We also, like I said, we need Scoot Swarm. Oh, right. Yeah. That's going to break everything. <laughs> <laughs> Rampaging Balas, another great one. Does it make elementals? Um, Rampaging Balas. Or it's beast, right? I think it makes a 5-5 five, five beast. Rampaging Baloth is 4 green green, trample 6-6, six, six, landfall make a 4-4 four, four beast. That's pretty good. I mean, it, it's going to make big beaters. Okay, so we're at hmm. 106, so I think we should start slowing. <laughs> Never. Otherwise, um, we'll be here I would all run day. some. <laughs> well, well, we'll do some. We'll do some cuts in a minute. I would personally run um, another uh, some X spells. I'd get uh, Fall of the Titans, so that we can possibly get two people out in one go. Oh, Bloom Tender, what are we doing? Bloom Tender, and uh, what's the what's Selesnia Bloom Tender? If if you're in chat, Ashen Selesnia Bloom Tender. Oh, is that Fayborough? Fayborough Elder. That's it. Those are both really, really good, especially with a four-color, four-dedicated color commander. I didn't even think of those. Yeah, for each color among permanents you control, add one mana of that color. And then if we've got ancient... No, no Emil. You settle down, John. And then if we've got um, Nyx Bloom Ancient on the battlefield... Oh, yeah. 12 mana gross all right so what can we cut down what do we have a lot of let's uh let's take a look at our stats here okay so we're at 109 cards our stats are we have a 40 creatures 33 lands 13 enchantments 13 sorceries six artifacts six instants and our mana curve is at 3.55 all right, so we've got how many creatures again, sorry? Uh, 40. All right, let's take a look at our creature list. We're, we're pretty creature heavy. Okay. So, did you want to keep the Deadeye Navigator at Dockside Extortionate combo in the main deck? No, nah, let's move them. They're, they're good with a Shia, but they're, they're not so much the kind of loop we're going for. That's fair. Um, so that's 107. We're at 107. We got so many cards. Oof. It's not bad. Um, Normally, if you watch us, Han puts me to 120. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no. <laughs> Send it away. Um. Is Thrix something we really want? Still? I was gonna say I don't think we're I don't think we're benefiting enough from Thrix. The double blue. The there's definitely not a Cyclonic Rift in there. You don't want me to get sick on stream. Cyclonic. <laughs> no, don't do it. <laughs> I can't be a part of it. Um, we'll we'll take a look at our lands. We'll upgrade our land base in a minute here. But let's uh, what else do we want to take out? Let's uh, let's ditch Garrick's uprising. Uh, sure. There's no Rattleclaw. Real... You think we have too much too much ramp? Let's uh, let's kick Rattleclaw Mystic then. Actually, yeah, with adding Bloom Tender and uh, and the Fabro, then Rattleclaw is just not as solid. I I would agree. Is Luminarch Ascension really good now? Oh, it's so good. Four four flyers at uh, Mana Sync ability. Yeah, fair, fair. You know what though? Let's cut it. We've got other things to do with our mana. We're we're all right. Okay. Let's maybe board Luminarch. Let's see where that one goes. Yeah, it's in the maybe board. Oh, yeah. What are we doing without a Morog? What? Oh, God. Yeah. Luminarch is so good. I love that mana sink. Morog in this deck's just disgusting. Morog in every deck is disgusting. Ooh, such a good card. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can see that. Let's lose reflections. I think that we've got enough things. We're not going to benefit. We have a lot of legendary things. Yeah, that's fair. Let's lose our reflections. We still have Lithioform Engine, so I'm happy to drop that one. That seems fair. Mm -hmm. And we've got three to go. Uh, We're at 33 lands. Did we put in uh, Rampaging Ballas? We did. Let's cut it. I'll put it in the maybe board. It's getting really difficult. Let's cut Uro. Really? Uro's okay. Yeah, it's okay. We're we're looking at a three mana draw unless we're exiling cards from our graveyard. I'd I'd maybe board Uro. He's he's meh. That's the first time I've heard I of Uro being called meh. <laughs> I would much rather something like an Oracle of Moldiah, like what was just mentioned there. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Something anything like a Wayward Sword Tooth Oracle of Moldiah, I think we're gonna get a lot more. Uh, benefit out of things that are giving us more lands, right? Oracle gets us an extra land. It lets us look at the top of our library. Solid card. Yeah, okay. I, I agree with that. Burrow triggers on attack if he's alive. That means that he's like nine mana by the time he can attack. Boo. Do we still need God Eternal or Ketra? Is that... Yeah, we have a lot of creatures, and we're gen- we're making a 4-4 zombie on every creature cast. Fair. But I let I'd say let's cut it. We're not like we're yeah we're of course of crucifix is really good, um yeah I, I would say let's cut it okay and now we're down to a hundred and one. Nyx yeah. Bloom Ancient such a good so I I was looking at the right of replication we still do want to be able to copy some of the lands if we can get them animated yeah so I would uh a really really solid uh. Let's first off go to the lands. Let's put in Ink Moth Nexus. We're all animals. It's infect. It's a fun time. So the reason that we want to do Ink Moth Nexus is for the silly thing that I'm trying to do with these gates. Okay. We want to Thespian Sage the Ink Moth Nexus. Ink Moth Nexus can become a creature. We can write a replication or progenitor mimic this uh, Ink Moth Nexus, right? Yeah. They will become Ink Moth Nexus Thespian Stages because it has the ability to copy the land. Then we can turn them into anything else we want. So we can make 10 Thespian Stages, make 10 Guild Gates, or 10 Field of the Deads if we're just feeling like making Field of the Deads. Okay. Yeah. Or make 10 Ink Moth Nexus like animals. What are we talking about? Uh, Royal Element. Yeah, we have. Yeah, we have it. Yeah, it it's hard one. to there. see, but we've got the secret lair version on there. Um, we, we're disgusting, and we decided to put that in. <laughs> yep. So what else are we at here for? Do what we, are we at for cards? We're 101, I think. Uh, 102 now, because of um, Ink Moth, but I can cut a land for that. That's no problem. So I'm probably thinking Explosive Vegetation. Yeah, that's true. Four mana, it's a bit too expensive for land search. But you got to remember, it's four mana that's going to generate four mana. True. So when we're looking at those that way, yeah, we've got Living Twister in the deck. Uh, Living. Oh, Twist- you mean as a cut? Oh, yeah, but it can bounce lands to re-trigger our landfall. You know what? I would rather have... Oh, I, I, do, I do agree with Ashen there. Explosive Veggies in and Once Upon a Time out. I, I think you're underestimating the Once Upon a Time. Swap Living Twister for Mina and Den. Mina and Den. Two red green. Also bounces land. May apply additional land, green and red. Return the land you control to its owner's hand. Target creature gains trample. Ooh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Witroar, this is a threat. <laughs> okay, so living twister <laughs> out. All right, so I'll that's go. So let's let's put your um, once upon a time back in. I'm going to leave. You're a guest. Let's put it in. It's such a good card. Like you said, you don't play it. We're at exactly 100, but though. We're at 100 right now? Yeah, 33 What's our lands. land base looking like? Uh, 33 lands, and... Does it tell us in, uh, in the stats, does it tell us what production we have of each? 
because we need more green production than anything. We have an even split of all four colors. Okay, so we're going to cut down. What What's our basics looking like? Uh, our basics are four forests, three islands, four mountains, four plains. Let's so, cut down to two plains, two mountains. Yep. Yeah. Go up four. Uh, go up one more forest. Oh, one more forest. Yeah, one more forest. And let's go down one island as well. Oh, no, no. We're, we're not going up that many forests. Those those are going to be for other cards. Okay. Uh, and one island. Sure. Yeah, so... So we have... Two, we should have... Five cards. Basics of each, right? We have five lands. What lands should we put in that we don't have in? So far, we've got Guild Gates. We have Field of the Dead, obviously. Okay. We've got our Thespian Stage. We have our Vesuva. So... Uh, what other lands should go into it? Breeding Pool. Because then we can search for a forest. Yep. Um, stomping Ground. Again, because of the forest. Okay, so what about things like the Battle Bond Commander Lands? Ooh, like the Bountiful Promenade, stuff like that? Yeah. The Commander Lands are good, yeah. Uh, I would go some Peru Lands so you can bounce a few more things, too. Okay, so you've got... Uh, Gruel Turf. I would just pick one of them. We have 99 cards... Uh, if I put another one in a forest. Don't put another forest in. What are you, crazy? No, I'm just making up to 100. Ooh, that is a great one. Aboro, Palace in the Clouds. What? Oh. It's a really, really fun land. It's very hard to find. Oh, is that the bounce one? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's shot up in price. Tap Marasa blue, root grades are... colorless, return it to its owner's hand. Yeah. Yeah, very, very solid one. Um, which is the Marasa Root Grazer? I'm unfamiliar with that one. Uh, Marasa Root Grazer. Marasa Root Grazer is a green and a white beast with Vigilance 2-3. Tap. You may put a basic land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Tap. Return target basic land you control to its owner's hand. Very solid. Oh, that's not bad. Um, so yeah, do... let's put that one in and let's see what else we can do. We have to cut something now for that, so hmm. Mina and Den's still pretty solid. What else can we take out for it? We've got I like all our artifacts. We only need one, only we only need one to trigger it, and we've got so many things that search for basics. That we'll, we'll always be able to use that root grazer. Okay, that's fair. Um, seen as our basics have basically gone down to about 10, is land tax worth it now? Mm, I mean, yeah. Because like I said, if you get it, you want land tax for the early land tax, so you can just pull those basics out of your deck and fix the colors immediately. Okay. Hmm. Cosmina could be fun. You know what? Let's cut land tax. There we go. And let's put a card that we don't see very often in because we're playing with guild gates. I really, really like crackling perimeter. Like I said, it's not a card that you get to see too often, but it has a lot of, like, really, really hurt people potential, especially if we can copy those guild gates like I really want to. Un uh, tap and untap gate you control. Crackling perimeter deals one damage to each opponent. Oh! That's pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, no, I like that. Though we're still at the problem at 101. <laughs> Anyone would think you're talking to Han. Um... <laughs> You you don't like uh you don't like land tax in there, Ashen? Uh cut Cut Titania. So we don't really have too many ways to use Titania, but she does make uh She does make like a lot of elementals, but we're not really killing our lands. 
Oh, I would definitely always run land tax because like I said, it's land tax is a big deck thinner, right? So you're increasing the percentage. Mm -hmm. How much life gain do you have? Every time you have a land enter, Omnoth gains you four. So absurd life gain. Yeah. We we should be pretty pretty easy to get into the 60 70 life in this kind of a deck i think incandescent soul stoke can come out to be fair other elementals get yeah. plus one plus one it's a lord but our elementals are like five fives and such they're already pretty big yeah yeah that, that that's fine yeah there we go 100 hmm you seem unhappy. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just looking. It could be a dead card, yes, but you want it as a turn one card. If it's in your opening hand, it thins your deck down. So then you're drawing from, after like turn three, you're drawing from like a 92 card deck after your draw. So you're increasing the chance you get everything else. Hard. Easy break deck with Kohama. You told me about this before I even did this stream, and I told you, not again. <laughs> yeah, Kodama's pretty easy with the uh, with something like a Field of the Dead because you just play a bounce land, return the bounce land, put a zombie in, put the bounce land in. Oh god, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, you can go infinite with it pretty much, but we don't need to go infinite here, I don't think. I think we're just having a good time. We are. If you want to do that, put it in. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Did we get? Did we cut down Titania? We'll cut Titania now. That puts us at ninety nine, and then we'll put in Kadama because I'm a filthy, filthy person, and put it back up to a hundred. Now we can have an Kadama. Burgeoning actually could be pretty good too. Burgeoning. Oh, we'll take out Kamama and put in Burgeoning then. Hmm. What's burgeoning? I need to remind myself. A uh, single green enchantment. Whenever an opponent plays a land, you may play a land from your hand onto the battlefield. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Especially if you got land tax out. Hmm. Yeah, I think we've got... Uh... What's, our What's in our maybe board? Let's see if there's anything we want back. Okay. Just a quick maybe board review. Maybe board is Dead Eye Navigator and Dockside Extortionist. Explosive Vegetation, Garrix Uprising, God Eternal Oketra, Incandescent Soul Stoke, Kadama, Lantax, Living Twister, Luminarch Ascension, Nature's Will, Obsidian Fireheart, Rampaging Bailoffs, Rattleclaw Mystic, Reflections of Lijara. Thrix, the Thunder, uh, Sudden Storm, Titania, Protector of Argoth, Triumph of the Hordes, and Uro. Yeah, I'm happy with those cuts. And did we put, what do we put in for Kodama? Or take out for Kodama? Um, burgeoning. Burgeoning's good. Let's, uh, let's cut something for Kodama. Kodama's pretty good. Okay. He's definitely worth Kodama and Luminarch Ascension. I, I just, I think that card's really good. Okay, so that th those will be my final ones. Luminarch Ascension. I, I personally say, if you want Luminarch Ascension, we cut Zendikar's Royal. But Zendikar's Royal gives us the elementals. Or Valakut Exploration. And we want the elementals. Let's cut Valakut Exploration. Because then it's an enchantment for enchantment. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then you want Kadama back in. Yeah, Kadama's so fun. Okay, so Kadama goes back in. Um, I would probably... Whew. What else do we have in creatures that we don't really need? Tireless Tracker. Do you really want that one? Oh, Tireless Tracker. So good. Okay, that's a yes. That, uh, the, oh, yeah, the Mana Sync Tireless <laughs> Tracker is probably the one I'd keep the most. Um, hmm. What about Geode Rager? Maybe the... Yeah, I was going to say the Geode Rager. It's really, really high mana cost. It's a very fun card. It's pretty cool, but it's just the... It's really, really high. Uh, where's Kodama? There's Kodama. Kodama pops back in. Because um, Kodama just gives us so much more. 
Like the goat is good, but we're going to be making lots of tokens. People aren't going to want to attack us anyways. 3.48 mana cost, not too bad. Not with the amount of mana we And we have a lot of group got. hug, right? We're, we're pretty friendly over here. Yeah. Uh, Eladamri's call is not in the deck. I think we don't need to search for creatures, the amount we're going to be drawing. <laughs> well, we do have a, a pretty absurd amount of draw in the deck. Though, instead of Eladamri's call, because we're running so many elementals, I did actually put in a Harbringer, which searches for an elemental and puts it on top of your library. Ooh, Nesting Dragon's also another solid one. We're never going to get this done, are we? <laughs> 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 we're just looking i i like good suggestions nesting dragon whenever land enters the battlefield create a zero two red dragon egg token with defender and when this creature dies create a two two dragon creature token with fire breathing i'm gonna add that straight to uh the maybe board I do think that one other card that would be solid in it is Chromatic Lantern. Just the land fix, the tap for any color and stuff. That's the the one that I complained on the Merfolk episode about you having. Um, I think that that's really, really good in, in this kind of a deck. Yeah. I say let's add that and let's find one more cut and then I'll leave your deck, your deck list alone. <laughs> um... Is the Amulet of Vigor working for us? Yes, yeah, we have so many gates. things to put. Yeah, I've just seen it, yeah. Uh, well, not only that, but all of our uh, Circuitous Root, Cultivate, any of those things. Yeah. The, uh, those those untapped is a great, great ability. Uh, what do we have? We've got so many good... What's what? Nature's Lore grab us? A forest. Let's cut Nature's Lore. Done. Yep. Done. All right, now to humor me, do a few test hands. Oh, okay. Play test. This Just is want to see if we get anything solid. Uh, well, that one didn't have any lands. That's not great. No. Uh... Ooh, abundance uh... would be good, too. So we've got a Valakut. We've got the triome we have the tracker tatiova we have great henge and elemental bond and our first, not horrible first few cards ink moth nexus and crackling perimeter uh yeah we're doing all right let's do one more and just quickly see i'm not so expensive but he's he's got Horn such good greed cards. Two lands, Lotus Cobra, Great Henge, once upon that, a time. That's the hand we want right there. Yeah, and then... If once we... upon a time, look at your top five cards for your free. Top five cards will be uh, Simic Guildgate, Cultivate, Carlos and Tiro, Zendikar's Royal, and Fall of the Titans. So we get a Guildgate. Guildgate or Keanos if we want them out early. Yeah. No, we're not going that. <laughs> Allosaurus Shepherd in a counter package. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He's like $200 now, that card. Oh, Allosaurus Shepherd just keeps going up. It's so good. They never should print already. a card that good. It's because all of the competitive monsters took them all. It's us. We're the competitive monsters. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us, MTG Finance Guy. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Um, I think this. I think this kind of a deck looks very fun. Like I said, I. Uh, to me, Maze's End is such a fun card to be able to grab and stuff, and the sneaky three. Who? That's too many. Uh, the the sneaky gate win. I think is like a fun thing to be able to play off. Yeah. At I mean, its worst, it's a it's a pretty cool fetch land for us. At its best, we get like a win that nobody sees coming. Well, yeah, because we don't have all five colors, so they'd be like, "Yeah, sure, it's just to get the the extra lands out your deck." I'm just land ramping. I'm just land ramping, and guys. Then, boom, <laughs> I win. 
but I'm I'm quite happy with that. How, is this how you thought it would turn out? Uh, I didn't. I did not see the elemental theme, but I think it's cool. I thought you'd like to see my brewing style. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, I uh, I think that this actually would be a really fun deck to assemble and like give a try. And I have almost all of these cards sitting here. Well, There's a few of the elemental ones that I don't have. Maybe uh, you should build it and visit into the 99 on a Tuesday with us and we can see it on stream. Maybe I'll come play one of those games. Uh, the Great Henge would be a card I don't have sitting in a binder. I have like two in decks. They're, just, eh. yeah. They're so good. It's one of those cards that's so good that like, you know, I get it. Play something else. Yeah, it's a good card. But you're happy to call it? Yeah. I think that that's a very fun deck. I think that that would be a really, really good time. <laughs> <laughs> Throw a whole land destruction theme in the deck. Oh, God, no. No. Strip mine lock. Strip mine, uh, Renin 6, and... <laughs> Somebody did suggest Renin 6 earlier. Oh, God. Yeah, that would have been a good one. Oh. But no, I'm happy to call it there. Um... But yeah, this has been really fun, actually. And I'm glad that you didn't see my way of brewing this uh, coming. And I still managed I'm, uh, to I'm keep your I'm pretty sure you saw that. Oh, I yeah, knew. I'm pretty sure you saw that I was coming with Field of the Dead. Yeah, I saw that you would see Landfall on that card and was like, yep, Landfall, this is how to build this deck. And I was like, no, let's go over here and build build Elemental Tribal. Which is cool. <laughs> Elemental Tribal is fun. That Rite of Reflection, there's so many... I, I, I think that would be one of the most fun cards to cast in this, especially if you could copy it with your Lithform. But there's so many good targets for it. If you can target your lands like I want to do, that's really, really fun. If you can target Field of the Dead, even better because it's so good. But there's so many good actual creatures, like your Ancient Green Wardens, your Avenger of Zendikars. Like, hitting six Avenger of Zendikars is nuts. Or is it It's five? Yeah. Five Avenger of Zendikars on the battlefield is crazy. Yep. Uh, any of those. Hitting five uh, Faber Elders would be solid alone. Like, There's a lot of really, really solid cards in this deck that would I mean, be a great target for that copy. I might even throw a little more copy into the deck, seeing how many, like I said, fun targets there are of it. Mystic Reflection and other things like that. Yeah. The Progenitor Mimic, I think, is a good one. Like, Basically, like your... Uh, uh, Oh, sorry, there's one more card we've got to put in. It is, what's the one that copies a permanent when it enters? Four mana, it's two blue. Someone help me out here. Oh, Phyrexian Metamorph? No, no, that, that copies artifact. It's um, Clever Impersonator? Does that as any permanent on the battlefield? Clever Impersonator, you may have it enter the battlefield as a copy as any non-land permanent. Any, Any non-land permanent, so okay, so I can't I can't get my field of the dead with it. No, especially if we're running a shire, that's going to be a bit difficult. Hmm. I do love that field of the dead. <laughs> the blue enchantment, Estrid's invocation. It also cannot copy though. Breaks mm. my heart. I know, sad. One of these days, I'm going to hit 100 Field of the Dead tokens. I'm going to make a deck for it. I, If you do, I want to play against it and see how it does. That's a lot of zombies. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy to call it there. I don't, like I said, I can't think of any other ways to get my Field of the Deads off the top of my head right now. So Nice. Well, it's been really good brewing this with you, actually, because I've not actually sat down and brewed a deck with you, and I'm actually really stoked for you to do this again with me sometime. Oh, absolutely. I had a lot of fun. And like I said, I really, really like your brew style of, I, I love, I, I am a tribal degenerate, right? So I, you have to do it with clone army. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I really like to uh, just build tribal decks in general. So seeing that you still went the tribe, I went landfall tribe because again, I know who I am as a person. Yeah. But yeah, like I, I really, really love it. Nice. Um, and and hopefully you build it and we can play against it. But um yeah, you'll have the you'll have the deck list in the show notes there, hey? Yep, the deck list will be uh if you're watching it on YouTube, it'll be in the uh description below. If not, um I will post it uh on the Discord of Into the 99, which you can find on into the 99.com, which is our hub for all our content, including amazing writers, 
Um, then you can chat to us in the Discord, suggest new decks. If you have any decks similar to this, you can also suggest uh, poke me, see what I think of them. I'm quite happy to look at them. And we've also got Patreon and uh, our merch store, which is also in the links below. And John also makes a, another good point. We do have a league that we're going to be running pretty soon. We haven't officially announced it, but uh, it's going to be a pre-con tournament. So there will be a tournament. Uh, prizing is going to be announced fairly soon, but uh, it'll be with the release of Strixhaven. Any pre-con is going to be a legal deck in it. You have to play it. There's going to be some upgrade rules, point-based system. But it's going to be a really fun time. A lot of games with a lot of really, really fun players. So definitely check that out. And like, like you were saying, if you're not in the Discord, you're going to want to be because no entry fee. You'll have a great time. And it'll be a place to play these Strixhaven decks a little bit before you upgrade them. I know we all want to tear them apart and get into them, but maybe play a game or two. Come on. But otherwise... Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys so much for stopping in and brewing. And thank you for all the great suggestions. Yeah, it's been very active tonight. And I've been loving every suggestion. Um, except Brian. Brian's been doing some weird stuff. Yeah, everyone, if you do play Kill Brian first, it's the right way to do it. <laughs> but otherwise thank you all good night everybody <laughs>